She'll say, uh, hi, hello, Grandpa. She'll say. And then sometimes she'll say, oh, my hurts. My and, uh, oh, my boo -boo. I uh, <coughs> poke at her or pinch her, she'll say. She'll complain. I don't know why they complain when you pinch her, but they do. Amen. It's so good to be here this morning. Amen. I'd rather be here than anywhere. And it feels cool in here. Hello, Miss Aria. She wants to go back there. Will you open the door for us? She wants to go too. She looks like a ballerina this morning. There's brother and sister house. <laughs> She's going to play drums today. Amen. Can I help Steve? It's good to be here this morning. Let's pray for Don and Noel. Sister Amy said that they are both sick and got the croup and I know the little rain rains had that yesterday. She was coughing terrible as all of them. So let's pray for all the babies. Let's pray for Don and Noel. Let's pray for Brother Donnie. Amen. He was transported and moved to a nursing home in Tell City. And um, I think they're better equipped up there to help him with his PT and OT. So let's pray for him. I got to go see him. <coughs> I don't remember what evening. Thursday evening, I think it was. And uh, we had a good visit, some good laughs. And I told him, uh, I don't know what we were even talking about. You never know what we're talking about. But <laughs> I said, I don't know how us two ugly men got such pretty wives. And he said, well, I know Patty must have been blind. <laughs> I said, yes, she must have been. Amen. But anyway, it was a good visit. I thank God for that. But uh, let's continue to pray for him. Pray for mom. She was... Uh, in the emergency room this week and not not feeling the best and I think they said she's got uh, uh, arthritis in her hip and tendonitis and uh, then they said that she may have to eventually have a hip replacement so I pity the children and have to take care of her when she has a hip replacement uh, or the nursing home which is one let's pray for her and uh, let's also pray for Belinda she's been doing better this week with her her breathing, I thank the Lord for that, but just keep praying for her too. How's Brother Coleman doing this week? Not very good. Let's pray for Brother Coleman. He's in the nursing home in Breckenridge. Let's also keep praying for Brother Jordan. I think I don't think a week has gone by I haven't received a letter from him. And I always facilitate a card and send to him from us in the church. So let's keep Brother Jordan in prayer. I think he gets out of basic training in a couple of weeks then next week so let's keep him in prayer and uh, the church is going to send him uh, some stuff that he needs and I, I don't have to get his next address but let's remember him anybody else have a request this morning for the tone uh, let's remember sister barbara and sister uh, phyllis in prayer um, sister uh, phyllis is oh good get that to you Yes, so let's pray for them. Sister Patty. still remember my niece. They did send her home, but she still has a lot of problems. Let's pray for her. She had a leg amputated here a few weeks ago now. March. M months now. Let's pray for her. Amen. Anybody else? Amen. Let's pray for that. It's a big deal. Let's pray for the uh, sister Haley and brother Jordan. They sold their home and they're purchasing another one too so let's pray for them anybody else sister martha okay well, let's pray for that amen you're here this morning pray for sister christy she works election booth here coming up uh, i went and voted this past week before I got pray for the elections amen like uh, pray for Destiny, Rachel's uh, sister. She apparently was pregnant and had a miscarriage. So let's pray for that. Amen. Her cousin. To yeah, her cousin, but they know each other, so they call themselves sisters. So let's pray for that. Anybody else? Yeah. Amen. All right, would you stand with us, please? Brother Bays will be preaching tonight at 6 o'clock. Pray for him. Amen. And uh, my 
My goodness, I'm looking forward to it. Amen. Sister Chelsea, I love good preaching. Amen. Amen. Brother Bays, would you take this to the Lord in prayer? Lord, in our name, Jesus, we praise thee and glorify thee. Hallowed be thy name, O Lord, most high. We pray, God, that thou have thy will in the service and in the lives of your people. We pray, Lord, for the healing that is needed by the sick. And we pray for the salvation for those that are upon the minds of those who are gathered here today. We pray that you move out and pour out of thy spirit and that holy anointing oil upon all needs that everyone should be delivered. We praise thee and glorify thee for all things. <coughs> In thy holy name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I tell you what, it's been a good week and a busy So I'm glad when Sunday rolls around. <laughs> Amen. I don't know if this is see it. Yeah, you can see that fish out of water, 
But that that fish can't survive without that water, Sister Christy. We can't survive without coming to the house of God. Because we might be living physically, but spiritually we're going to die. And I thought about that this morning, and I thought about this song, and I think it goes along with the lesson this morning, too. Would you be free from your
like, man, I could have spent $50 on something. I'll pay you yours if you pay mine. Yeah. <laughs> Patty, come on, I'm a working man. Yeah. I'm retired. <laughs> Amen. Amen. One of the, you know, I don't think this generation will ever get to retire. Brother House, I think I'll work till they put me in the ground. And then the bill collectors will show up at the funeral and ask me. Be home all the time. 
We've been trying to advise Brother Bays with the best ability that we have. And he's excited about spending more time figuring out how to get out of her being retired. <laughs> he's such a good man. He's such a humble man. Give me Sister Bays is so humble. Yeah. <laughs> Sister Smith, you better take it. <laughs>
verse of that song when they stoned Stephen, he died looking up to heaven. He said, I see Christ sitting at the right hand of the Father. I was thinking as she was as she was singing, Sister Kanita plays that tambourine. I was talking to one of my cousins at Tim's High Flute Church. And uh, he said that he, he said I asked him if I could play the tambourine and they said no. And he said, Well, I told him that, you know, I'm a really good tambourine player. Of course, you know, if you keep me, you play tambourine pretty good. And uh, they they told him no, that he couldn't play. Because if they let him play, everybody else might want to play, and then they would have mess and people off beat and everything like that. And I thought to myself, well, I'm glad that, man, I mess up every time I play that piano. I'm so glad nobody tells me no, you know. I just think that we, uh, Sister Chelsea, you better come, but when, when we get to heaven, amen, I know that the Bible just says make a joyful noise. It doesn't say how it has to be on a key or on a key. Or, uh, you know, I'm so glad because, man, there's times I sing and I'm way off. I had a dream one night that uh, I was singing and it was so off key, but the Spirit of God was moving. So how can you complain about that? I don't think you can complain about that. If you want to play tambourine in my church, you go right ahead and play tambourine in my church. Amen. I believe you just obey the Lord and that you allow the Lord to use you. Amen. And He will. Amen. Would you give her your mic yet? My Lord, stand there. Amen. Anybody else have a testimony? Let's receive the offering. Amen. Sister Chelsea is going to sing for us. Sister Chelsea is a phenomenal singer. Amen. Better than me. Not quite as good as Sister Martha. She's trying to boast her ego here today. Hey man, she's got that vertigo. I'd like to help her out. No, no, they don't. No, they don't. Lord, we thank you for this time of giving. We thank you, Lord, for all of your many blessings. Lord, I pray that we understand that, God, we can't afford to not pay our tithe. Lord, so I ask you this morning to bless each one that has to give and those that can't, Lord, you see and understand. Lord, we pray your richest blessings upon this people today. God, that you would help us with this gas prices and the uh, prices of everything that has gone up. Lord, we are your people. We live on your economic system and not this world's. And I pray, Lord, that you help us. God, if we, if we can't afford to pay our tithe, Lord, we can't afford anything else and should not buy anything else. But Lord, I pray that you help us to understand that and to rely on you, not ourself, not our government, not our place of employment. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I've had a cold this week, so I'm going to need all y'all to practice your joyful voice. As I travel through this pilgrim land, there is
Sunday school class as can be is this. Amen. What key was that, Brother David? That's why I stick Sister Christy up here. Uh, I don't know how to play it. Amen. 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 Here we are today, May 15th. Already. Is this book about God? It's the last date in that book. Amen. Uh, here we are already. 15th of May. Middle of May. Amen. And the <clears throat> lesson today, where does Sister Mark? Uh, the, call, the call to repentance. Call to repentance. The lesson, big idea says, I will repent of my sin. So, oh, well, there's a new thought, isn't it? Amen. When's the last time you don't answer that? When's the last time you repent? Amen. Mine was this morning. Huh. Might be just now if somebody makes me mad now. <laughs> he says, just calm down. Okay. Amen. You'll get on to little Addison and she'll say, I sorry, I sorry, you know, or she, she does something and she gets the hurting, you know, she'll say, Thank you. To say, oh my boo boo, you know. <laughs> Isn't it amazing that we turn out to be like kids as we get older and we complain about everything? And, amen. Less than big idea. I will repent of my sins. The focus verses is in Mark 2 and 17. And Brother Tony, we'll need your help today on these lesson text verses. When Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician. But they that are sick, I came not to call the righteous. <laughs> I think there's a little sarcasm in that verse sometimes. Because <laughs> when you talk to people <clears throat> and they're so prideful, yep. they're so righteous. They, you know, they don't need repentance, do they? Nope. Like my cousin's church. Hey, I, I love United Pentecostal. Don't get me wrong. I, I got family and I, I love them and, and that's fine, you know. But man, when they're so holy that they just so righteous, <laughs> they don't need repentance. I see problems. Amen. Amen. Well, there's two agreed. Amen. I come not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Amen. I'm glad that I was a sinner saved by grace. I'm glad that Sister Amy, I acknowledge that I mess up and that I can go to God in prayer. Amen. Amen. Uh, some of you are never have had to repent. I understand that. You repented and asked God to forgive you of your sins and you've been perfect and righteous ever since. I think that's great. Brother Stephen says not him. Well, not me either. Me either. Brother House back there, yeah, maybe, but not me. They no, no, not Brother House either. Sister yeah. Mom, maybe you? Yeah, she's shaking her head. Yeah, well, good. Amen. <laughs> no. We know that we, we come to the so short of the glory and the Amen. righteousness of God. The truth about God says God calls everyone to repent. Amen. The lesson text, Brother Tony Matthew 3, 1 through 11. Uh, this is a beautiful lesson today. Absolutely beautiful. I pray we get through some of them. Go ahead, Brother Tony. Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 through 11 says, In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye! For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leather girdle about his loins, and his meat was locust and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea, all the re region around about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sin. Mm. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee 
from the wrath to come. Bring forth therefore fruits, meat for repentance. And think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Amen. You know, we should not just be baptized in water and come to church thinking that that uh, good works in and of itself, Sister Christy, is going to get us into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. My message today on faith, on YouTube, we shared it on Facebook. I'm not going to spoil it for you because I want you to run out and hear it. But it, it alerts you to the problem that people have. Yep. I have seen, and I, I question myself sometimes, uh, Sister Martha, and I'll, I'll say, M, I don't want to be lazy. Hmm. Amen. I don't want to ever get lazy uh, physically, and I don't want to ever get lazy spiritually. Amen. Amen. I think that when you get lazy physically in your, your carnal body, Sister Susie, that if we're not careful, we'll get lazy in our spirit. Amen. 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 What I mean is that uh, we, we, we'll stop praying we get lazy, don't we? We'll stop reading we get lazy. If we, if we don't want to go to work every day, I understand none of us love to get up. We love to go to work. I understand that we'd rather have other things and do other things. Amen. But but I think about this generation that's coming up and all they want to do is sit in front of the television and play video games and on these little phones all day. And all I see is parents that, that they encourage their kid to, to stay in their room away from everything and just stay on these these entertainment pieces to, to keep them out of their head. And I think to myself... Don't you understand all you're doing is raising a bunch of lazy brats. Amen. 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 I'm not talking about little babies, but I'm talking about when they get to the, the, the age where they can get out and mow grass and they can get out and help pull weeds. I remember I was thinking about this the other day at Gentryville Church. We had a ramp built and actually the Connors paid for that ramp to be built, but we, Grandma uh, always liked to landscape around that ramp right there in the front because it was kind of a little hillside. And once or twice a year, Grandma herself would go over there and she'd sit in a folding chair and she would pull weeds. And you felt so sorry for her, you'd go over there and help even though you didn't want to do it. <laughs> Man. I, I remember uh, uh, many times watching Grandma, even though she couldn't stand and walk, She'd get out in her own flower beds and her own edges, amen, and she would pull weeds. Man, you just, you didn't go outside while she was doing it because you know you was going to get broke into help it. <clears throat> What's wrong with teaching our kids not to be lazy? Amen. amen. To work hard. To do things that are right. Amen. Amen. What does this have to do with it? Because children... Nowadays, at this time, I see it, they feel so privileged. They feel like they uh, they don't even recognize the privileges they have. That's right. Amen. Amen. They feel like everybody owes them something. Amen. And we wonder why our church gets vandalized and why these kids around here, amen, because they, they don't, parents aren't raising them right. They don't take them to the house of God. I didn't have a choice when I was growing up. <coughs> My kids didn't have a choice. If I went to church, you went to church. Elijah knows as long as he lives under my roof, he better be in the house of God. And when he moves out of my under my roof, he better be in the house of God. <laughs> Amen. You say, well, yeah, he's scared of it. Amen. But we must repent with pure humbleness and mean it from our hearts. Sister Wanda, I've seen these crusades of Billy, uh, Billy Graham and Jimmy Swaggart and some of those big evangelists and 
hundreds of people come up and they repent. I've heard Jimmy Swagger even say, you know, just a fraction of those actually stay in the walk. You know, they come up because they they feel a little drawing and then they leave and they just get lazy on God, don't they? Why isn't the church full this morning? Well, some are sick, I understand that. But the fact of the matter is people are just lazy. They'd rather, they'd rather sleep in. Amen. they got to work tomorrow morning. I understand that. But God doesn't have that opportunity to be lazy on you. Oh, I better move on. Oh, laziness won't do any good, though, when we stand before you. It won't. It won't be an excuse. We, uh, we justify, though. Don't we? Amen. Well, i got to get up and go. Well, I know that. So do I. <laughs> but if I don't show up, believe me, you you won't have. You might have church, but you all gonna sit there the whole time wondering where Pastor Howie is. Well, I just wanted to sleep in today. <laughs> well, let's move on. Mark one one through five, brother Tony, would you read that for us? In the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Amen. Make his path straight. John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And there went out unto him all the land of Judea, and they of Jerusalem and were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. Amen. Amen. You know, when we go back to Matthew chapter 3, and the and John the Baptist says, Ye vipers, O ye generation of vipers, who has warned you. He's talking to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Yes. Those that were um, considered themselves to know everything. Those that considered themselves so holy, right? And they came to be baptized of John the Baptist. And, and, and he sees, uh, Brother J.R., he sees that they are doing it because everybody else is doing it, right? Let's see what this is about. Let's go be a part of it because all these other people are doing it, right? Yeah. Amen? Amen. That, that doesn't get you to heaven, does it? Yeah. Doing it because everybody else does it. Amen? Amen. I was watching a documentary on this group. I can't remember exactly where they were now. It seems like Arizona or something. And they uh, they all started, it was a cult, and they all started to commit suicide. And they would, uh, they wore Nike shoes. Does that sound familiar to anybody? I think it was early 90s maybe they did this. They wore Nike shoes and then they, they put like these purple scarves over their heads and they would, uh, yeah, because they, I don't know, some alien or something is supposed to come. I don't know. Anyway. But you see how stupid people are? Oh, yeah. We're going to do it because everybody else is doing it. That doesn't get you to heaven. You've got to be careful <laughs> following the crowd. Amen. 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 Not that baptism was bad. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying you've got to be careful. In Mark 2, 1 through 17, Brother Tony, would you start reading that today? And again, unto Capernaum. And after some days it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. They came unto him bringing one of the uh, sick of palsy which was born of uh, four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of palsy, Son of thy sins, be forgiven. Hang on just a second. Notice that the first thing God does is forgive this gentleman of his sin. That's right, man. Amen. Everything else is second. Your, your initial problem is sin. Amen. It's self-centeredness and it's lack of belief. You understand that? Those are the the Lord laid that on my heart because I, I think it's so true. 
the, the, the initial problem is always sin. Understand that. It's self-centeredness. It's what I want to do. It's what I want out of this life. Amen. And it's lack of belief. Do you understand today, if people truly believed that God was coming again, if they truly believed that they were going to be judged according to their works, Amen. The houses of God, not just this one, they would be so full that the buildings themselves could not contain people. It is a lack of belief that God is going to be the final say in their life. It, 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 it is the sin problem. The biggest problem in the world today is a lack of belief. Amen. Lack of belief. I went. 41 and a 25 the other day, Brother House. <laughs> I got a ticket. I believed that I could go 41 in that 25 and I'd be okay. Boy, was I wrong. I got a ticket. I paid the ticket. Like a couple days after I got it, I paid it. I don't like leaving that stuff play out. And I paid it. And then they said, you can take this online class and, and get out of the ticket, you know, and not have points against your license. I said, okay. So, uh, so the uh, Bible says confess your faults. I know none of you speak. Amen. <laughs> Brother House drives that truck. He don't speak. Amen. But I was, uh, uh, I was speeding. Amen. You don't have a perfect pastor. But I, I, I took that, I called them and I said, listen, I want to take this class. And the woman said, but it shows you already paid. And I said, well, yeah, that was the right thing to do is pay my ticket. Well, you should have paid it. And then you could have taken this class. And I said, well, Wait a minute now. I did the right thing and now I'm getting punished for it. Amen. So then I can take the state class, which she said was more expensive than the county class or whatever. Well, that wasn't true. It was only $15 to take the online. So I did that and uh, finally finished it all. Amen. Because I believed, Sister Wanda, I could go 41 to 25 and I'd be okay, but I couldn't. I got a ticket. Amen. See how we think that we believe things, our lack of belief that we're going to get caught. Hmm. Go on, Brother Tony, verse 6. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Why doeth this man thus speak blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit, that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Whether it is easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise, and take up thy bed, and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the sick of the palsy. I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. And immediately he rose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all, inasmuch as that they were all amazed, and glorified God, saying, We never saw it in this fashion. Amen. Amen. You know, we're on the time to interject here. Uh, you know, a lot of people know the word, they hear the word, but they don't respond to the word. And that's the reason why their hearts aren't changed, I believe. Mm -hmm. And then it's also like if I go out here, and I know when I get in that car, if I drink, and I get caught by the cops, I'm going to get a DUI for that. Now they know it, they believe that, but they go ahead and do it anyway. And it's just like people of the world. They may know the word, they may say that they live the word, but they don't, and they go ahead and override it anyway and live any old way they want to Amen. and never respond to the word of God. That's very true. Amen. We, we're all going to stand before the same merciful God. Amen. I'm so glad of that. I was going to say something. Yeah, that is part of the scripture here. Uh, thing is, is that, Rob, we can have faith for other people. Yes, we can. Amen. And I bring that up about mm -hmm. repentance is because if you notice here in the first few verses, it said that the four men, they are the ones who brought this man, tore off the roof, and laid it down in the 
And Jesus looks at them and says, when Jesus saw their faith. Yes. Amen. Right? Yes. Well, had they not had faith, this man would have never been healed. This man would have never been able to be told, thy sins be forgiven. Amen. Rise up and walk. If we'll have faith for our loved ones, and we'll have faith for the community around us, and we'll have faith for the people, that will draw people to yes, repentance. We stand in the gap for others, don't we? And we intercede for them. I believe in intercessory prayer very much so. Brother Tony, read that. Well, Acts 17 and 30. Finish that one scripture. Acts 17 and verse 30 says this. And the times... <coughs> And the times of this in ignorance God winked at, but now commanded all men everywhere to repent. Yes. Amen. Every knee shall bow. Yes, Every right. town shall confess. Under the lesson commentary, John the Baptist preached repentance. Sister Rebecca, would you read that, the first recorded words? The first recorded words spoken by John the Baptist. know that every step in the right direction starts with repentance, doesn't it? It don't start with the right amount of savings and account. It doesn't start with the right marriage or investments or uh, the right uh, home or vehicle. It starts with repentance. Amen. Amen. John the Baptist pointed to Jesus. Isaiah's prophecy about the ministry of John the Baptist pointed specifically to Jesus. Think about that. But John's focus on Jesus was not limited to Isaiah's prophecy. John made it known from his comments <clears throat> about Jesus and his interaction with Jesus that Jesus was superior to him. John the Baptist consistently pointed his hearers to Jesus. Everything that we do behind the pulpit, every, everything that we do in our lives should point to Jesus. Amen. From from the job that we keep, the company that we keep, the, the way we keep our home, the, the, the words that come out of our mouth, the, 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 everything that we do should point to the fact that we know God sees everything that we do. Amen. And we in no way want to bring a reproach upon the Lord. Amen. Amen. He said, the author finishes, he, will, he also knew Jesus was the promised Messiah who would take away the sin of the world and baptize those who believe on Him with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Notice the right approach was taken by John the Baptist pointing to Christ, teaching of Christ, preparing the way of the Lord. John placed himself second and the Lord first, Sister Amy. The preaching of repentance prepares the way of the Lord. Sister Christy, would you read that? Yeah. 
the son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Over on the next page. Sister Chelsea, you see that? You care to read that? During his ministry on earth, Jesus demonstrated his authority to forgive sins. For example, presented with a paralyzed man lying on a bed, Jesus said, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. He said this in response to the faith of the paralyzed man and those who brought him to Jesus. Although this text does not specifically mention repentance, it is referenced to faith. The willingness of the paralyzed man to be brought to Jesus and the obvious faith of those who brought him all indicate hearts that have been transformed by the hearing and responding to the gospel. The Bible does not tell us every detail of each of them, but it opens our understanding of unmentioned details by those that go before them. Did you read that next section too? Jesus went to the sinners. The Pharisees and scribes who did not believe on Jesus complained. This man received sinners and eateth with them. In response, Jesus told the parable of the lost sheep. Jesus' behavior that offended the Pharisees and scribes was the purpose for which he came. In this parable, the 99 just persons were those who thought themselves to have no need for repentance. These represented the, ph the Pharisees and scribes. The one lost sheep was the repentant sinner. You see what that author says of the very first sins. Pharisees and scribes who did not believe on Jesus. Didn't I tell you the biggest problem is a lack of belief? People not believing? And there the author even says it himself. This man receiveth sinners and he, he eateth with them. In response, Jesus told the parable of the lost sheep. Do you understand that the biggest problem is a lack of belief? But, but brother, I don't have to believe in God and to, uh, uh, to go to heaven. Well, how else are you going to make it there? By doing good deeds? The Bible tells us specifically that doesn't work. Amen. Amen. I don't have to go to church to be a Christian. Well, what do you call it? I call it a lack of believing. If God says to assemble yourselves together and you don't believe that, aren't you countering the Word of God? Right. Isn't it amazing that we think we can make it to heaven the way that we have justified our path? I don't think I'm saying it right. Uh, we have convinced ourselves that we can make it to heaven by doing uh, uh, D, E, and F when God said it's got to be A, B, and C. That's right. Well, I can only I can do B, maybe, Lord, but I want to keep E and F in my life. Sister Christy. You didn't mean your pie. No. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah, boy, you're headed in the right direction today. Brother Tony. They can choose what scriptures we want. Yeah. That's pretty much what the world thinks. And, and I like what you were saying. I've always, I've heard it said that the only power that the devil really has is the power of persuasion. If he can persuade us yes. to believe something opposite of what the Word of God says or something different yes. than what the Word of God says, a lot of times... Uh, people have their own interpretation of what the Bible says oh, yeah. versus what the Bible actually says. Yeah. You know, Brother Tony, I, I visited in kind of a fascination with Thomas Jefferson. I visited the Monticello. Beautiful grounds, beautiful home. Um, you know, the Bible speaks specifically that, that slavery is wrong, right? No man should own another man. We, you know, we understand those things. Thomas Jefferson, uh, though, convinced himself that slavery was okay. He convinced himself that uh, having a relationship outside of marriage was okay. And then we see that there is such a thing called the Jefferson Bible. I've talked about this before. Where he literally went into the Holy Bible and he cut out the sections he did not think uh, needed to be in there. He created, Sister Susie, his own Bible. It's called the Jefferson Bible. And uh, he created his own. Now, according to him, he was going to make it to heaven based on what was in the Jefferson Bible. Well, what's in the Lumpkins Bible today? What's in the Alvey Bible today? What's in this Alvey? What's in that Alvey Bible? What's in that Alvey? What's in the Taylor Bible today? What's in the Young Bible today? 
What's in the houses? Their houses now. The house is Bible, right? What what is it that we have convinced ourselves doesn't apply to us in the Word of God? Go right? ahead. And that we can do without that section, that part, that commandment, and still make it to heaven. Well, I don't think we have the right to decide what path is correct for ourselves. Now, now that, that confuses some because we are we we here in in the world and we grow up in school and we're told that we are the choosers of our own path that we are no 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 there is a pathway there is a way that seemeth right unto man and it leads to death Amen. Uh, and that is the pathway that we have convinced I was watching a commercial the other day on television and this this woman said that she she was typing and she said now now in this age we something along the lines that now in this age we have a right to be who we are i thought most of you all don't even have a clue do you? these these uh people that are are and i i know this isn't very favorable but sister patty those men that want to be women and women that want to be men and those that really just don't even know what they are amen they got you know, some parts that reflect this sex and some parts that reflect that sex. And I, I don't know. I go in the stores and I get all confused sometimes. Amen. But they have convinced themselves that that's okay, haven't they? Yep. Because they don't believe. They don't believe. They don't believe. They don't believe that there is a judge that will judge them one day. Amen. Because the, because the Constitution has been interpreted that it's okay by somebody sitting in a, in a bench or in a chair somewhere in Washington doesn't mean that, that God approves of it. That's right. Amen. See, the devil knows the, the, the word. Yeah. Well, Amen. It's just for Christy's right. That's the first thing he done was twist the word. Yes, twist the word. Of the Lord. And that's what people have done today. Think that you can live any way, do whatever you want to, and you can still make it. Amen. And and that's not the truth. So what what does the church? What do we as individuals? How can we impact this situation? How can we impact? Well, here it is in the next section. The account of Jesus' call of Levi illustrates Jesus' mission. The scribes and Pharisees question Jesus' willingness to eat and drink with publicans and sinners. But Jesus answered, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick that come not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. You've got to understand that, that the, the closer we get, Sister Yvonne, to the coming of the Lord, the more the minds will accept the gray area and not just black and white. That's right. You understand that? They will accept that what they think is okay. Because God's not come yet. Here we are in 2022. God's never come yet. Oh, you better be careful. Yeah, that's right. God is not mine. God is not mine. Repentance is not in this next section. Repentance is not a suggestion. It is a universal command. Amen. And to prove his point, those that did not repent here will bow before him there. Amen. Because it's not a suggestion. Sister Smith, it's a command. To be sure the Athenians understood the scope of this command, Paul explained that God hath made of <clears throat> God hath made of one blood all nations of men, and to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed, and the bounds of their habitation, and that they should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. That last section, Sister uh, Chelsea, honey, would you read that? I will repent of my sins. The ability to repent is a gift from God. When Peter explained why he had gone to the house of Cornelius, he said, Repent and be baptized. Those who refuse to believe, to repent, will perish. When we obey this universal command and experience that in the name of Jesus Christ, we have the promise of forgiveness and 
me read from my notes and we'll be done. Repentance is not a bad thing. It is a good way to get further in your walk with God. And it's how we begin our walk with God, isn't it? We should not jump in the middle of the pool when we don't know how to swim. We should start with the elementary things and work our way there. Amen. Amen. If we're going to get anywhere with God, if we're going to get anywhere further in this walk with God, we need to learn how to repent. And I'm not just talking about repenting of, of alcohol or repenting of smoking or repenting of anything else like that. I'm talking about repenting of your laziness, repenting of your self-centeredness, repenting of your lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, repenting of your covetousness, repenting of your... Oh, we could go on and on, couldn't we? It isn't, Lord, just forgive me my sins because I told a lie. There, there are other things that if we're not careful, they harbor in our heart, don't they? Amen. Let us pray this morning. Lord, we thank You today for everything that we have. Lord, without You, we could do nothing. And without You, we are nothing. I pray today, forgive us of our sins. Help us to believe, Lord, that we are not perfect and that You did not come to seek and save Save the righteous, Lord, because they have no need. But Lord, that you came to seek and save those that are lost. And God, we were all lost. Amen. I pray this morning, God, help us to reach out to those that we know are lost. To live a life that is pleasing unto you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Brother Stephen, would you tell the class we're done? Sister Christy, would you come? Jesus loves the little children of the world. Amen. Little Atticus yesterday he laid on the bed with me right here. Just laid there. He loves his Uncle Rama. We share a birthday. Yes, we do. Sister Al will be there. She's been mean to me all week. She has a Please don't forget tomorrow night, 7 o'clock is prayer. If you can't make it, set aside time at home and pray. Amen. Or on the road or wherever you may be. And 
But come tonight, 6 o'clock, expecting the Lord to do something, take a nap. They said we may have rain, but it sure don't look like it. Brother Tony will be preaching at Sister Carolyn Hills this coming Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, isn't it? Amen. So remember that. If you've got nothing going on, go support him. Amen. And uh, they're not here, but Brother and Sister Palmer Tree had an anniversary Wednesday. Amen. So let's uh, try to sing to them tonight if they come. Amen. Anybody else? Anything else? All hearts and minds. Alright, go to Baby, you dismiss us. Lord, and I want to thank Jesus. We thank you for thy worship, thy service, for thy fellowship, for thy saints. We pray that you keep everyone safe and bring them back again the next appointed hour. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.